So you're new to a 3018 CNC. I've got the Saint Smart Prover version 2 right here. And I'm going to show you how I put a spoil board on it. And we're going to do a very simple project. We're going to make some snowflakes like this out of uh, it's about 3.5 millimeter plywood. And we're going to set this up in easel and then run it through candle and make one on here using what they call the tape and CA glue method. I'll detail all this stuff here step by step coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And as I mentioned at the very beginning there, we're going to do a very simple project. If you're experienced with CNC's and operating one of these 3018's or even a bigger one, this is going to be boring. So it's probably not something you would want to watch. However, if you are new to this and you don't really know where to start or what to do or how to do it or anything, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. Okay, hopefully when you bought your 3018 you did buy some extra and different style router bits. Maybe you didn't really know what to look for. These uh, little 60 degree V carving type bits they, they send with the machine are okay. For this project but you won't get the best result in the world. It's best to get what they call a flat nose or an end mill and they're available in an assortment like this here, Saint Smart and other places, or you can get all of one size. This, this one here happens to be 3.175 millimeter. This is a set which gives you 0.823 millimeter and we're going to be using the two millimeter flat nose end mill for this project. Again you can use one of these that came with it. Your results just won't be quite as sharp on the edges and your cut will have a kind of a V-shape to it because of the way the bit's designed. That's just the way it is. So let me take you in first. I'm going to show you about putting a spoil board on your CNC because you don't want to be cutting through and cutting into the bed. And this is a very simple process. Okay, you'll see here what a spoil board does, and I did this on purpose. I deliberately overcut one of my snowflakes I was making to show what a spoil board is for. That is, if your bit goes through your material, you don't want it going in the aluminum bed. You want what they into a more or less a uh, sacrificial piece of wood. Okay, so how did I make this? This is just plain old half inch MDF. You can get it at the home store, or home center. Or wherever and I like to use MDF because it is flat and there are methods to actually surface a spoil board if you really want to get down into the nitty gritty but for those just starting out just uh, stock MDF you don't obviously make sure it's not been laying somewhere and got bent and curved and warped but or cupped but it lays well it lays flat so I, what I did was I measured and laid out two holes using the center mounting hole on each side uh, again, this bed on the Prover version 2 does not have the T-slots, it's just a flat bed with threaded holes. Grabbed a couple screws out of my junk drawer, countersunk them a little bit below the surface so that the bit will not hit it accidentally. And then we have blue tape on there and I'll get into uh, the reason for that and how we're going to set this up next. Okay, so what materials are you going to need? Well, you're going to need some wood. And for this, I'm using this Crafter Square from Dollar Tree and I cut a piece off of it because we're only going to do a, a small section and the entire piece of this is obviously too long to set on the CNC so therefore cut a piece off. This is roughly four and a half inches wide. I just made a four and a half inch square here. That's what we're going to be making this snowflake out of. Next you will need blue painter's tape. I like to get the wide stuff here. You get this at your home store too. Then you will need what they call CA glue. And you do not have to have an accelerator, which makes it an instant bond, but it is, it's handy. It makes it, things go a lot quicker. So let me show you how to get this set up on your CNC bed. So as you can see, I already have some tape on there from other projects I've been doing. So you just want to get a piece of tape that's roughly the width of your board. And you try not to overlap it too much. But 
you do want to make sure that there's going to be enough tape to cover your project area so that you don't uh, accidentally glue your project to your spoil board. I'm just going to cover my screw up there a little bit. So we're going to be working just in this corner. Now next you want to take your project board and pick outside which side you want it to be the bottom. This doesn't really matter on this. You want to cover that with tape. You don't have to go right to the outside edge, just make sure that uh, you're not going to get any CA glue where you don't have tape. We only need to glue down the area that's being cut out and a little bit around the outside so things don't go flying. And I do not need a full width there. And you don't want any wrinkles in it because that will throw your height off. So here now, I want to take some CA glue that I'm using tight bond, instant bond wood adhesive thin and just scatter a bit of that about where your project's going to be. Don't need to go crazy with it. Doesn't need to cover the whole surface. Then using the accelerator and this is optional you don't have to use it but if you're going to do this without using the accelerator it's going to take a while for that to bond. So just spray that area you're going to be sticking it down to set it in place so it's square with the world and hold it there for a few seconds and it is stuck. Now we'll go to the computer and I'll show you how we're going to get this laid out. Let's start out with something simple. I'm in easel here. I'm logged in and this screen will come up so I'm going to click on new project. I'm going to keep this very simple. Our material is uh, four and a half by four and a half for what I'm going to be using here. And I need to measure the thickness. Make sure you do this accurately. Use a caliper. So mine is 0.135 inches. That is very important. Okay, so now we've got our piece set there. My bit, I am using other and the width of mine is two millimeter it's an end mill you could also use the stock bit you have to change that to uh, I believe it's one millimeter or 0.5 millimeter has a fine tip on it, it does not make a very good uh, result though so it's better to use an end mill our cut settings Okay, I'm going to switch this to manual because I want to change a few things. I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm going to reduce this to 5. Depth per pass. I'm actually going to cut that in half. Because it will give a smoother finish. Of course, I need to change my, whoop, change my speed to 10,000. We'll leave all that as it is. Okay, now we need to bring something in here. I'm going to use one of the free graphics they give you here. Down here to Holiday. I'm going to grab the snowflake. You want to cut it on the outside. I'm going to move that up here just a little bit so it's not right on the corner. Now I want to change the size of that and let's make that a little bigger. Lock this little lock here so your proportions stay in place. And let's make this 3 inches. So now we need to go on that graphic here. And for our cut, we have a cut path on the outside. Or depth, I want 0.136. I want to go just a little bit. So I'll make sure I go through. Don't go too far. You'll have a deep mark in your spoil board, as you'll see on mine. Okay, we do not want tabs because I'm going to be using the uh, CA glue and tape method here. 
And I'm not going to add any more depth there. That's actually a pro feature. But if you do it up here, back we'll double check there again. Okay, so now all we need to do is export that G code. Now we'll call this something. Let's call it a snowflake. So it says this is my next round with this. I'm going to call it Snowflake 3. We'll go back to Project. Download the G-Code. Now we'll open up Candle. Here to file, and open. I know that's in my downloads. There's our snowflake. Now I need to get my CNC connected. So as you saw in the setup there in Easel, I, I changed some settings on the cut with speed and rate of feed. Why did I do that? Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't it work just like it is? Well, yes and no. The problem is if you feed too fast, or you take your cut too deep at once, uh, aside from the fact that you could break your bit, it leaves a very, very rough cut. I'm going to show you a couple of examples here. This is a little globe-shaped thing of the world or whatever. It's just one of the free files on there. And as you see here, this is very, very rough. The, yeah, the wood's rough. This is scrap. So I did the same thing again, but I cut the speed in half. And it yeah, it was a lot better, but it still was a little bit rough here. So I changed the depth of cut and cut and brought that back. Of course, here I did a little jack-o'-lantern guy because yesterday was Halloween. So you see I've got very, very clean, concise. Would take very little sanding to clean that all up. And this board has been stained, so this would stand out a little bit better. But that just gives you an example. You don't want to feed too fast or too deep at once. And speeds and feed rates, there's, it's a lot of trial and error, really. There's some kind of guidelines you can go by, but it's not something that's just set in stone for every material and every situation and every bit. You're going to have to do some experimenting, and it's always nice to start out with a scrap. For your bits, here again I'm using a, a 2 millimeter uh, flat nose end cut bit milling or whatever you want to call it. If you go on St. Smart's website, they have a file you can download, and it's multiple sheets, and it's a bit guide. It show you all the different types of bits they offer, and they give you recommendations on what they can be used for, what they're made out of, sizes, all the model numbers are there, and they're not really all that expensive. So it's something you'd want to stock up on. So what I'm doing here now is I'm taking the machine what they call home. Now this is a can you click on the little magnifying glass got the little house inside that'll take it home. Okay what I need to do now is set my probe in to get my depth offset. What they call the z-axis offset. Set my probe underneath the bit. Clip the little alligator clip to the bit. Then in candle, the box is right next to the little house magnifying glass. You've got a down arrow. That sets your offset. So then all I need to do now is remove this. Set it off to the side back here, out of the way. And we're ready to send this. So I'll just go down to the bottom here and click send, and away we go.
So there's our snowflake and as you can see we got some little fuzzies here we need to sand off. If I would have used a down cut bit or even slowed the feed rate down farther that of course with a down cut bit you wouldn't have the fuzzies up here at all they'd be on the other side. Uh, if I slowed the feed rate down a little bit more I probably could have eliminated a lot of that. That's easy to take off with a piece of sandpaper. So now all you would do is lift your piece off and pull the tape off the back. And here's our snowflake. As you see that side doesn't have much for fuzzies on it. This side has a little bit, but very easy to take off with a piece of sandpaper. And I could go further with it, but you can see they almost all come off pretty easily. So there's a very simple get you started project using this inexpensive Dollar Tree Crafter Square birch plywood that they sell in these planks. Try to get you started here if, with your uh, 3018. If you know if you're new to this, you got to start somewhere. Nice little project. I did give you some feed rates there and some speeds to use to kind of get you started and give you a little bit of a guideline. There again, feeds and speeds is there's nothing really set in stone. There's a lot of complicated calculations when you really get deep into it. But this kind of give give you something to get started. Have a easy successful project. You could make a bunch of these, I suppose, and do a little bit of decorating. There's some other free graphics in there. Uh, if you want to get into the Christmas theme, since that's getting close, you got snowflakes, you got Christmas trees, you got Santa. There's quite a few different things you can use in there. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Uh, the Saint Smart Prover V2. This is version two of the Prover. I also have the version one. I've had it for a couple years and it's been used quite a bit. Link will be in the description where to get a hold of one of these and I'll put a link in for uh, accessories and bits and things like this too so you know where to find that. Uh, again, you can use the bits that came with the Prover, but if you get an end mill or a flat nose, it'll make a lot better, smoother cut than that little V. And, you'll have straight edges and not v or angled edges. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.